Freaking at the Freaker's Ball, and you can bet I'm going to itch me where it scratches. Welcome, folks. This is the Freaker's Ball. It is Friday evening here, January 10th, 2020. How the hell y'all doing? How the hell y'all doing out there? <laughs> How you liking this 2020 so far? It's been an exciting time, hasn't it? Oh, boy, I tell you. <laughs> and uh, tonight, uh, tonight, not only is it a Freakers Friday, but it's also a full moon. It's a full moon Freakers Friday. Ah, uh, anyway, <laughs> so hopefully you guys are all ready for a fun show. Uh, I, I think I am. I, we'll see how it goes as we go along. Uh, anyway, let me tell you about, uh, let me say hi to all the folks. Let me tell you. Yeah, let me say hi to all the folks out there in the various places that we go to uh, out there on Minds.com. Howdy, Minds. Uh, FreedomsNetwork.com, RealLiberty.org, RLMRadio.xyz, and, of course, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com and the Vaughn uh, video streaming site, Vaughn.live slash RealLibertyMedia. Oh, you great folks. Thank you so much for the services you provide uh, that I take advantage of as much as possible. Well, as much as necessary. Maybe not as much as possible. Uh, that, that, that'd that be like stepping over the line or some some kind of craziness there. So, yeah, I don't have to do that. Um, <laughs> well, let me say hi and howdy to all the folks here in the chat. The chat that you can find there on reallibertymedia.com and uh, and on rlmradio.xyz and on the Frickers Ball show page. There's a different chat over there on Vaughn.Live, but nobody uses it. I've, I've made comments over there a few times, but uh, nobody replies. Anyway, say hi and howdy to all the folks that are here in the chat. Uh, we see, we see, of course, the Mighty Barman. Yes, indeed, the Mighty Barman. Uh, and uh, Beetle and Cowboy Tech, myself and the Moose Girl, the lovely and talented Miss Kate, uh, and Anti and Asbo, Chelsea Doty. Miss Gramsy, hey, Grammy, how you doing out there? Are you still awake? That farmer keeping you up? Uh, we got the Java Doctor and Meester Meister Brow and uh, things down there in Arizona. Poopster and Prince. Prince! Prince, where the hell are you? Man, it's been, uh, you're like missing in action, dude. We're getting a little concerned for your welfare. All right, we got Rome's, a.k.a. Trust No One. That lovely and talented letter turning Vanna Whitebot. Um, Vin E, who is howling at the moon there. Yes, Vin E. Uh, we have the weather dorkbot who just, uh, shared some information there with Vinny about his town of Shirley. Don't call me Shirley! Oh, uh, Phantom and CC66 Joskira! The, uh, circle, circle, you awake? You still sleeping? Alright, sir. Uh, we got the Cyborg Nudel, Cyborg Nudel, uh, and uh, Siv, flash somebody who is awake, and yes, that is enough. So, uh, uh that's always good, that's always good. We got, uh, the Frump Star from Canada. There's a goob. Hey, goob, you, uh, tuned in, you listening, uh, say something to let us know you're here, man. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, Gromit and a guest. Who the hell is this guest? I don't know who the guest is. We have a guest, though. Two nine four hundred, JJ's Scottish boy, uh, Pone Sauce and Raptor Jesus, the sock puppet. Hey man, sock, what the hell you doing, man? How's it going? Uh, thanks for that new script the other day. Smart ass, the holiest of Rogers and uh, Zipex, and other folks that are out there and around that have uh, not tuned in here or jumped on into the chat yet. Come on over, jump on in. The water's fine. And hey, Blackbird, I see you out there uh, uh, liking my tweet about the about the show. So come on over, jump on in there, Blackbird. Um, uh, guest two nine four hundred. Oh, I guess that is whatever. <laughs> Asking if we've seen the men's twenty twenty fashions, mostly dresses. Um, I, eh, yeah, fashions. Not into it. I'm not about it. <laughs> Anti says, hola, hola, anti. Um, 
All right. And, well, I, I got some time here till uh, till uh, the Moose Girl tunes in or jumps on here to share share radio with me. Let, let me tell you about, and I know you're all uh, waiting with bated breath to hear about my saga with my garage door opener. <laughs> <laughs> so Sunday night I went out to get groceries. Everything was fine. I, I drove out, garage door closed just fine, and I come back from groceries, and the garage door doesn't open quite all the way. It opens like three quarters of the way. And, ugh, what the hell's going on? Anyway, so uh, uh, I, I didn't really investigate it that night. I just disconnected the uh, the door from the opener thing, and jammed some screwdrivers there to hold it in place. Anyway, next day I investigated, I find out it's this big gear on there that that's, that's, uh, was shredded. It's an old thing, and it was shredded. So whatever, I order uh, a new gear that with some other parts and such that come with it. And I watched a video there on the YouTube uh, of how to replace that particular gear. And the guy makes it sound like super easy <laughs> to do, which... To, uh, pretty much, kind of, maybe, sort of, it was. <laughs> if you had all the same tools that he had, which he kind of uh, glazed over, he didn't really tell you about all the stuff that he needed. Uh, so anyway, I pulled the, I pulled the gear out of there the next day, Tuesday, and uh, and I'm looking at this thing because there's this like a pin. Uh, first off, let me just tell you, I don't know who designed this thing. <laughs> this device, but two of the screws you can get to fairly easily uh, up up inside of there uh, if you have a long enough extension on your socket wrench. The third one, however, the the distance between the gear and the top of the casing is just too freaking short uh, to get a socket wrench in there. Uh, it's just not enough space, and so I had to uh, to dig out a. Uh, a 5 sixteenths wrench, an open-end wrench, and, and take it out with that. Which, let me tell you, was a pain in the freaking ass. Because there's a lot of threads, and you're and, and there's not much room to move back and forth. <laughs> anyway, so I decided, all right, well, to counteract this, uh, I, I will I will get myself some self-ratcheting wrenches, which I did. Uh, but also in his little video where he was showing removing the little uh, pin that holds the gear in place on, on, on the shaft there, um, he put he put the thing in a vise, and 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 was able to get it out that way. Well, I didn't have a vise. I have a vise now. I didn't have a vise at the beginning of the week. I have a vise now, and it's mounted to. Well, it's not really a workbench. It's kind of like a a cabinet, <laughs> a waist high kind of cabinet. But it's pretty sturdy. So anyway, I I got the the vise in today, and. uh and and I was able to mount the or get the get the get the gear and the sprocket and all that stuff in there. Uh, anyway, so uh, I was pounding on that thing for a while. It was not moving. It was not budging. So I took my uh, Dremel tool and a cut off thing, and I cut the uh, all the nylon plastic parts away from there. Fairly easily, yes, you are fairly easily. Uh, anyway, so I, I cut all the. The, the the plastic parts away from there, and I was able to finally uh, drive that thing out of there. Okay, great, that was terrific. Um, then I got I I was able to use the vise to actually drive that old pin back in. They sent me two pins with with the little kit, but neither one of them the one was too small and one was too big, so I was able to use that old pin again and and get that back in there. And I put the thing back in there. Uh, put it back together. Uh, uh, put the put the chain back on. Uh, tighten that all up, nice and fine. And and then the the it was like there was something messed up because I, I must have moved the chain around or whatever. Which probably I mean you know um, during during the replacement there. So um, <laughs> so so then I was trying to figure out how to make this. Uh, thing work because uh, uh, there's like these different different adjusters on there. One's one's for up and down force. Well, there's two for up and down force, and there's two for uh, up and down limits. All right, fine. I was playing with them and I was uh, trying to open the thing and close the thing, and uh, it, it it wasn't really getting there. Anyway, so I I came in here back in here and I and I watched a video on how to adjust that. 
and they didn't really have a video on my exact machine, uh, but well, which which I have is a very popular one. It's a half horsepower uh, Sears LiftMaster, whatever. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I finally got it. I think adjusted to where I want, but uh, as I was just kind of smiling and going, "Yeah, I got it," uh, and it was coming back up, it stopped. It just stopped dead. And I'm like, "What the hell?" There was like nothing going on. It just it just stopped. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so I'm like, "All right, what, what's going on here?" And I'm checking around the different things. What what did I do wrong? There's still power. Everything's going there. And then I went to, like, uh, tap on the motor. There's a big motor there. And that motor was, like, hot, hot, hot. So uh, apparently I overheated the motor. <laughs> anyway, I think I got the adjustments pretty close, if not perfect. But I won't be able to test it till tomorrow because by the time all of this happened, it was getting kind of later, and I needed to, to do some uh, stuff before I, you know, get ready for the show and all that. But, uh, yeah, uh, so it's a lot of fun, man. Let me tell you, party. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I got some new tools out of the deal. I didn't really want to, you know, have that expense of those tools, but uh, I needed to have them. But let me tell you, there's another thing I could have gotten, which was the whole sprocket kit um, with everything already attached. And you would have to, if I ever have to do this again, I'll spend the extra few dollars and buy the whole kit because that thing's already assembled and uh, uh, basic. There's still stuff you got to do, but um, yeah. And so I'm I'm standing up and sitting up on top of my Jeep to to work on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, fun, fun, fun. So Moose Girl is, I think, getting close to calling in. I don't know. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and do here. Um, we're going to go ahead and play some music while she finishes prepping up or whatever it is she's doing over there. Oh, wait, she's calling. Never mind. Never mind. Here she is. Here she is now. One, two, three. Moose Girl. Hola. Hola. How the heck are you? Good. How are you? Oh, doing fine, doing fine. Good. <laughs> oh, I didn't even I didn't I didn't even talk about the Jeopardy goat. Uh but uh the Jeopardy goat was not what on Jeopardy goat. Jeopardy goat was not on tonight. It was on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um okay. and it will resume oh, okay. on it'll resume on Tuesday again. So far, for those of you not watching, Ken yeah. Jennings is in the lead with with two wins and uh Holsauer has one has one win and Rut Rutner has no wins. Um, is it Gre Jennings is the the one that won the most, right? Uh, I think Rutner won the most. I think Jennings okay. Jennings won the most games. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and Rutner won the most money, and Holsauer um, won made what made set more records than anybody ever on oh, there. Wow. You know, he liked the most okay. money in a single day and all that stuff. So anyway, oh, okay. so they're doing this the greatest of all time. Whoever right. wins of those three guys, the three big money winners of Jeopardy, uh, uh, and and I know the people are saying it's the the winners have already been released on the interwebs, but I haven't went out and looked. I haven't. Well, I don't want to know. I yeah. don't want to know either. I, you're not even watching it, so it doesn't matter to you. But right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I, I, I'm I'm still I'm still pulling for Holzhauer. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm not even. I don't even remember that rudder guy, but he was like back. I in, don't. Even, I just remember that Jennings dude. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, rudder. He was back in the early 2000s, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that was I don't but he was he was in another you know other tournaments I've seen him in. But oh, okay. Uh, I, I don't remember him you know playing his games, but I yeah, hmm. I saw Ken Jennings okay. play his and and Holzhauer do his, but that was last year, so. Anyway, yay Jeopardy! Yay! <laughs> and, and you know, they messed it up because if it was already released, you know, there's betting lines. They, they, this is like a sport. Um, and they, they have all the betting lines in all the various places that who's going to win the Jeopardy, even though it's recorded. Oh, I suppose, yeah. E even though it's recorded way ahead, 
um, th- that information is not supposed to get out there. So, uh, yeah. Right. Which, is, you know, um, today, if someone leaks it, it's going to get out there. Yeah, and, and then somebody's going to leak it, and apparently somebody right. did. And I don't, I don't know what that did to all the bookmakers and stuff. I guess they, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't keep track of that. <laughs> no, neither. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, I, you know I love Jeopardy, so that's fine. Yeah, I do too. I like Jeopardy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But I should go on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> okay, okay. I should. Uh, I'm pretty damn good at that freaking show, game, whatever they call it. Yeah. Oh no, whole sour. He was last year. Uh, I think yeah, that's who you and mean. So Jennings was not too long ago either. Yeah, Jennings was I don't know five eight years ago something like that. But uh, I remember that one for some reason. Uh, that sticks out. R- R- Rudder reason. was the early two thousands. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, so I did, actually, I he was, was raising kids. Actually, he was. He I think he was first before that because he, they had a time back when you could only win five games and then they. Oh, you, then they, they then you had to move on. Yeah, but but you could come back, um, and then I think he came back after that when when you could win more. So. Oh, okay. Whichever, whichever. It's Jeopardy. It's trivia. Yeah. It's trivia on television. Yes, it is. <laughs> and Barman doesn't have any say in the matter. No. <laughs> there's no there's no bad spellings. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah. So I know you're going to a music set, but I'm just going to say this right now. All right. You can choose a ready guide and some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from phantom fears and kindness that can kill. I will choose a path that's clear. I will choose free will. Thank you, Rush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> R.I.P. Neil Pert. Yeah, sad. This fucking sucks. What do you do? What do you do? You were gifted, dude. Yep. All right. Um, All right. Like I said at the top of the show, it is, uh, and let me go ahead and do this story before I go on. Okay. The first full moon of 2020. Tonight. Yes. Tonight, and it's known as the wolf, the wolf moon. moon. Wolf moon. So howl yep. at the moon, my my fellow Ow! canines <laughs> out there. Uh, all right. So uh, the first full moon, known as the wolf moon, shined in the night sky on Friday. At the same time, a penumbral lunar eclipse will be visible, but not to you and I. Uh, it would have been visible probably last night to um, to uh, Flash and Cirque and uh, probably those Aussies down there, but we, we didn't get to see it. Um, right. Or, yeah, it's, it's not in the U.S., so screw us, you know. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, that's basically it. Just it's a full moon. It's a full moon night. It's a wolf moon, and um, howl at it, bark at it. Yep. Yeah. Whatever at it. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, yeah, Stevie, steal your Riffs Miller, doing Space Cowboy for that spaced out cowboy tech. Yes, indeed. Before that, we had uh, Bad Moon Rising by a band called VOA uh, d- did that there. Um, <laughs> it didn't go over that well with the chatters, but uh, I like that. I, you know, I go try and look for something a little bit different than the, than the standard fare. Uh, we've played Creedence, uh Bad Moon Rising so many times here, so I thought I'd uh, find something a little different, a little, little harder, a little heavier. And we kicked it off there with Ozzy Osbourne and doing Bach at the Moon. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. uh, and, and I'm sorry you guys didn't like the uh, VOA cover there. I didn't like it. I gotta say, I'm so used to the Credence version, like, how yeah, the fuck see, am I supposed to like that terrible version? It was not a terrible version. It's a, it's to me, it was a terrible version. All right. I'm just it, saying, it, was di- it was different. I'll give you that. It was different. Different, but terrible. Different and terrible. It, it, it was a harder version. <laughs> it, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, you know, <laughs> 
you don't get to hear Fogarty doing his little twangy thing going on. So uh, right, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, anyway, yeah. so we lost an icon. The world lost an icon today. Yes. An icon drummer named Neil Pert. R.I.P. Neil Pert. Yes, indeed, um, old buddy. He was a Hall of Fame famer. Um, and unfortunately, and I was bummed about this, I did not know he had geloma blastoma, but that's what he had, which is brain cancer. It's the worst kind of cancer you can have. That's right, what killed my right. best friend that I had for 30 years. It's terrible. I feel bad for his family. It's probably been a long journey. Apparently, he's been, he was suffering from this for about three years. Um, it's not pretty, you guys. It, it, it's just the worst kind of cancer you can have, and I don't try not trying to be a downer or anything, but seriously, um, yeah, no, it, he was he was one of it's was, really a bad thing. It's a it's a death sentence when you get diagnosed with this. Okay, right. He he was one of the best, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, what, what are you gonna say, really? I mean, R.I.P. Buddy, sixty-seven. That's pretty young, you know. Yeah. Um, but it took my my girlfriend at forty-eight, you know. Yeah. And it, it, I, it I, they don't. Okay, they really don't know what causes this form of cancer. They don't. Like, we will never know what caused my friend Heidi's cancer. We'll never know that. that what caused the brain tumor? Yeah. And like, it's weird because. It's more, it's more, um, it happens a lot more than you think. Yeah. This so diagnosis. If you, you guys know, are interested in reading it, uh, he was well respected. Yeah. Dave Grohl, Billy Corgan, Geezer Butler among rockers mourning Neil Pert's yep. death. Uh, they're on Variety. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, man, Rush, man. Fuck. I mean, he was the best, like, people oh, but he's best. He was one of the from best. him. <laughs> yeah. What? So I don't know if he was the best, but he was one of the best. <laughs> yeah, he was one of the best drummers. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it sucks. Oh, sorry, I posted that again. Well, it's a different one. You, um, you, no, I didn't post it. You, you, posted right. the, you posted the stones. I posted the variety talking about it. Oh, okay. All, all right, good. All, all those different so, ones. So, yeah, I was kind of on about that. And, you know, Facebook's being flooded with needle pert. You know, it's like, I get it, you know, yeah. guys, but. Yeah. 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 Taylor Taylor Momsen, the singer from Pretty Reckless, yep. the Pretty Reckless, offered up a handsome photo of Pert uh, and stated, "Such a loss, one of my favorite musicians of all times. His influence in music will live on through anyone who picks up an instrument." I agree. She's pretty awesome herself. <laughs> yeah, one of the best bands in the world. Seriously, is Rush, dudes. Was like they are seriously. Yeah. One of the best fucking bands in the world. I mean, in my opinion. I mean, maybe not right now, but at their time, especially, and maybe even over all time. I mean, if you listen to their lyrics and just listen to their music, they are incredible. They yeah. are fucking incredible. <laughs> if you go through that variety article, you'll see all the, I mean, all the all the big name people, okay. drummers yep. that you that you've known and loved. Dave Grohl, I think I already mentioned him. Let me see. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, wow. Uh, yeah, Peter, everybody's just like you know, Frampton. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, Fr Frampton, and uh, who's this guy from the Roots? Questlove. Billy Coogan from Quest Questlove. Uh, tenacious D uh, guy Jack Black, of course. Jack Black, yep. Yep, yep, yep. The Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, 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 wow. Anthrax drummer Charlie Benatai. Benate, Benate, I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Taylor Momsen, the Beach Boys. Uh, Brian Wilson quoted from one of his solo songs. He tweeted, I, I just heard about Neil Peart passing. I feel real bad about this. He was too young. Neil was one of yeah. the great drummers, and he will be missed. Uh, Gene, Gene, some of the worst. Gene Simmons, Max Weinberg from from Springsteen's band there. I don't uh, think anybody even knew that he was sick. Well, I mean, his inner well, circle did, obviously. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. It sucks, but, you know, 
it is what it is. <laughs> you know, it, a lot of people react to death differently. Like me, I've I was exposed to it as an, at an early age, death from cancer. Right. So that kind of like set the tone for me going <laughs> forward. You know. Ben Watt does not like Brian Wilson. No, he does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> anyway. That sucks, but um oh no, I got fucking bookmarks here. Close these. Well, let me talk a little bit about Okay oh I got the okay, go ahead. Let, let me talk a little bit about cell phones. All right. <laughs> the company I've been with for a few years now, Virgin Mobile. Yeah. Uh, apparently being absorbed by Boost Mobile. And okay. So I got a I got an email from them uh, earlier this week I think, or last week I forget which whichever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't I don't I don't really like the looks of Boost Mobile or whatever. So I went out I found a new company that I'm gonna I'm gonna go with and it's called uh, okay. It's called uh, Tello Tello dot com. Okay. And, and I can get what I'm getting now twenty bucks a month unlimited talk and text. Sweet. Uh, for uh, eight bucks. Wow. <laughs> eight, eight bucks a month. Nice. Eight bucks a month. Um, That's a good deal. But yeah. it depends on what kind of service. If, it, if it's crappy Well, no, service, I, I, then... I've inve- I investigated them pretty thoroughly before I decided okay. to go ahead and go okay. with them. Um, I haven't switched over yet because I ordered a new phone or a, a, a new used phone, I, a new to me right, phone. Right, right. Um, which I'm also getting for 20 bucks. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. cheap, dude. I it, like it. It is. I'm it, liking it. it. I, I wanted one that 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 still had the the slide out uh, keyboard, you know. See, I love those ones. Man, that's man, what I want. Man, I want my old QWERTY keyboard. I still have it. Yep, yep. Because the one I have now, the 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 one I have now has that, but it it's a it's a virgin made for virgin. Right, but uh, the touch show and the the touch screen shit, I fucking hate it, dude. I hate the touch screen. I, I'm used to, like, pushing buttons, like, you know, all the buttons. I, I like it. Okay, well, this so one... You didn't make as many mistakes, you know? The, this one that I'm getting, apparently it's got both. Uh, so. Whatever. Oh, I want a phone like that. I want the QWERTY keyboard. And, and you know, I wasn't I wasn't into getting the whole smartphone deal, but whatever, for 20 yeah. bucks. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> so, so it, it's got all, it's got all the new fancy features and shit like that. But, uh, like I said, 20 bucks, man, I can't go wrong. Uh, a, a, anyway, so, um, uh, yeah, this, uh, this, uh, this whole thing. And I, I, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me because, uh, apparently, uh, the, the reason that, that, uh, Virgin, Mobile is being absorbed by Boost Mobile has something to do with a merger uh, that um, T-Mobile did with Boost, and it's like Virgin had nothing to do with T-Mobile, so I I don't really get the the connection there, but whatever. Um, (laughs) So there's that. So 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 there's that. So uh, yeah, I, I, I said I don't really get it. Uh, but, uh, but, but, but that's what happened. Um, so, yeah. A- anyway, this, uh, where's that, where's that other link I had? Oh, did I just delete it? Did I, I think I might, oh, here it is. Um, okay. <laughs> Which, I came across this today, and I'm like, what now? <laughs> wow. uh, post it, post it on Forbes.com uh, here. Um, we'll, yeah, they're really helping you out over here on on your your wonderful US of A. Uh US funds program with free free Android phones wow. for, the, for the poor. However, they come with permanent Chinese malware. <laughs> Great. Fucking wonderful. <laughs> now apparently though it says for years Low income households have been able to get cheap cell cell service and even free smartphones via the United States government funded lifeline assistance program. I think that's the Obama phone program. Uh anyway, one yeah. one provider, Assurance Wireless, offers a free Android device along with free data, text, and minutes. It all sounds ideal for those who 
don't have the money for a fancy Apple or Google phone, but according to security researchers, there's a catch. The Android phones come with pre-installed Chinese malware, which effectively opens opens up a back door onto the device and endangers their private data. Uh, one of the malware types is impossible. Thanks a lot for the free fucking phone, bitch. <laughs> the malware is impossible to remove, according to researchers. <laughs> researchers at the security company, company Malware Bytes, said that they had tried to warn Assurance Wireless, a Virgin Mobile company, which, again, right. no more Virgin Mobile. Uh, they had received no response, so the devices likely remain vulnerable. Uh, <laughs> oh, likely, likely yeah. remain vulnerable. <laughs> so, uh, you hand them all to dumbass fucking people that think it's a good thing. Oh, thank you for the fucking you're, you're, spy phone. You're too, you're too poor to get a phone. Here, here's a free phone. Now, yeah, just, lot, just go on there and we'll, we'll grab all your data and info and do bad stuff to you. Not that we right. have, not that you have any money that we can steal from you because you're already poor. Jesus. But uh, who knows what we can do? <laughs> wow. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> there's that. I found it. I found it humorous. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, and you cannot uninstall uninstall the malware. Nope, it's un, it is unremovable. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> uh, so. oh, you can't make this shit up, dude. I, I know, man. It, it's like, yeah, here we got it. We got a nice program for you. Here, check it out. <laughs> oh my now, god now fuck you <laughs> right alright I, I usually save these till the end but we'll go since I'm already talking kind of tech stuff Yeah. here we'll go ahead and do this you running Firefox who's running Firefox out there who are y'all out there running Firefox I am alright well you better update your Firefox okay <laughs> critical Firefox zero day under active attacks Update your browsers now. And I'm a little skeptical of this because not only did I come across this article on the Hacker News, which I tend to believe the Hacker News pretty much for most things, but I saw that the Department of Homeland Security was also recommending you to update your browser. So... (laughs) So that gave me a little pause. Anyway, anyway, if you are running Firefox as your web browser on Windows, Linux, or Mac systems, uh, if you are, you should immediately update your free and open source Firefox web browser to the latest version available on Mozilla's website. Why the urgency? Mozilla, earlier today, which was actually yesterday, released Firefox 72.0.1, and the extended uh, service release 68.4.1 version to which a to patch a critical zero day vulnerability in its browsing software that an undisclosed group of hackers and since the Department of Homeland Security is telling you about this uh, I think we have they've just disclosed that group of hackers is actively exploiting in the world so uh it's tracked they got a tracking number here of the bug it is critical uh, type conf- hmm. type confusion vulnerability. It resides in the Ion Monkey just in time compiler uh, of the uh, Mozilla's JavaScript engine Spider Monkey. The general type of confusion vulnerability occurs when the code does not verify what object it is passed to a uh, to and blindly uses it without checking its type, allowing attackers to crash the application or achieve code execution. Uh, so they didn't give you any details about the flaw, and there's no details about the ongoing potential cyber attacks. Mozilla said incorrect alias information on Ion Monkey JIT compiler for uh, setting array elements could lead to type confusion. Uh, either way, um, if you're running Firefox, uh, I, either uh, go ahead and update your version to the latest version or get that... Uh, uh, long-term service release version, which is probably a better deal. Um, and you could get that. It, it's Firefox ESR 68.4.1, All uh, right. the extended service release 
Uh, and with that, it's, it's actually uh, with that version, you can run all the old, the old style uh, plugins that you can't run on the new Firefox. So uh, there, there are benefits to that. Or just run Waterfox, and then you won't have to worry about it. Or right, just, which is what I do. You or know. actually, just run Brave. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, now I I, I wasn't really going to mention this, but uh, I, I have signed up uh, with through via my Brave browser to be a uh, what do they call it? Brave content creator. So if you are using wow. if you're if you're using the Brave browser, and you yeah. go to reallibertymedia.com, rlmradio.xyz, our YouTube channel, our uh, where else? Somewhere else. Oh, Twitter. Is Brave the one with like the lion icon? Yeah, yeah. Okay, or, okay. Or or or, or to Twitter. Um, the, there's a thing called Brave Rewards, and you can you can send tips directly uh, to Really Really Media through uh, any of those the uh, RLM oh, site, the uh, RLM radio site, the uh, uh, YouTube channel, or the or the Twitter channel. So uh, uh, yeah, so I I don't know what what it's worth. Let me, actually, let me see. They they tell you how much. How much have I made? Ooh, one point four bat, which is twenty six cents. <laughs> but this is only that's a that's a couple of days worth. Uh, but, so, <laughs> uh, and, and you know, I don't think anybody knows uh, too much about it. Any, anyway, so uh, if you got the, you got the Firefox, go ahead and update the Firefox, uh, just because. Um, why? Yeah. Not? Why? Why? Why would you want that vulnerability? Uh, available out there, and apparently also yeah. also on Brave. If you use Brave, you get money just for browsing around. Oh wow! Okay. Thanks for that. Oh, there. Wow. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not money, but uh, bat no. bat tokens. Oh, okay. Bat bat. Which, oh, okay. Which, and they tell you how much each token is worth or whatever. But, oh okay. But All but right. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, if you put your settings so that you, it'll show these little very non intrusive little pop up ad. Uh -huh. it, 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 it's, it's just a thing that pops up and says, "Hey, look at this!" But you don't, and it's just a little white square. It's not like a, not like a pop-up ad like you're used to on bad websites. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's, that's that's good. I'll try it. I'll use it more. I'll try it. I haven't been using it. I mean, I'm yeah, slacking. Yeah, 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 slacker. I'll try it. See, I'm a slacker. Right. Um. So something that I just saw here. All right. Um, on DailyMail.com, and I know it's DailyMail.com, but you know they have reporters and photographers all over the fucking world. Mm -hmm. So they fucking get the pictures and the stories, you know. Sometimes ahead of other other places, you know. Yeah. Daily Mail a lot of times breaks the story. Like they're the first place I see the story sometimes. Yeah. So I know it's a mainstream media site and it's a UK site. They have good pictures. Anyway, you know, they they have they have some of the best pictures. They do. That's what I'm saying. They have photographers all over the fucking world. Yeah. At any given time. So I just saw this one, and I just I, it, it it struck me because okay, we there's homeless people. There's a homeless person problem, if you want to call it that. Yeah. In this country, okay. We have it here in a, the, my my town of Eau Claire, which is not a major city at all. Okay. Right. And so I think my city or whatever is a microcosm of the whole homeless problem across this country. Right. Right. So there's a shelter that isn't big enough, and you have to be there at a certain time to get in line, so you're able to get into the shelter for the night. Right. Yeah. And obviously. When it's below zero, the line's very long, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how these people freaking do it. Like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I would fucking die. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, I wouldn't die. I shouldn't say that. I wouldn't die, but it's so... I wouldn't live in Wisconsin and be homeless. That's for one thing. I'd fucking move somewhere where it's warmer in the winter, right? Mm-hmm. For one thing. Because it gets brutally cold here and gets snowy and shit here. Like, being homeless in a northern climate in the winter would be so difficult. Right. So difficult. But what you can do, I mean, and, and then, like, 
the reason I thought of this is this story from Los Angeles. Right. Because they have a huge problem. Well, see, it's warm in California. So you get these homeless people go there because it's warm there all the time. Fairly, I mean, livable, where it's not, you're not going to fucking die of being cold. Right? Right. From the weather. So they tore down this three story um, homemade shelter. And it, it's, it's pretty elaborate. It's three stories. I mean, it's an eyesore, but this is an example of you can't just be off the grid and build something like this without being them fucking with you. You know, right. I mean, more power to these people that are trying to build some kind of a shelter that, you know, keeps all rain and shit. I get it. Sure. But if you're doing it right in the city of Los Angeles, that's going to be frowned upon, dude. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, so behind the quick trip, there was these old apartments in the ghetto quick trip. Behind the ghetto quick, quick trip in Eau Claire. Right. Uh, we call it the ghetto quick trip. That's just our nickname for it. Anyway, they had some shitty fucking apartments, and it was pro bad problems with drugs, and just they, they were an eyesore. So they tore them down, and the city bought that lot. So now the city's plan is to put up low-income housing there. All right? And that's all well and good, because they're like, well, we got to deal with the homeless problem here in the city, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Okay, but the answer is not what they're doing. They, it, what, okay, I think that what they're doing will help some people. Okay, it will help a group of people, but it's not going to help the homeless people because you're going to need to be clean. You're going to need to be go through hoops to prove that you're eligible to live in that facility, right? Right. Or that that apartment building. I mean, it, it, it's it's government involvement, you know, sure, and sure. that's why there's so the homeless people they don't want to deal with the fucking government, dude. You know, a, a lot of the homeless people in this country are mentally ill. And they need, or depressed, you know what I mean? They they need medication. They need treatment. They need counseling. No one's throwing money at this, okay? Well, you, you know, here's the thing. No one's me. throwing money at this problem. Here, here. They just want to put up housing, but that's not solving the problem. The problem is, why are they homeless, okay? Not that they are homeless. Oh, just give them a home. It's why. It's they're mentally ill. They're ex-soldiers that saw the shit down in, back in Iraq or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know, these people just... The government doesn't fucking, fucking care about these people. You know why? Because <laughs> they don't they don't work. <laughs> they don't have jobs. They're not in the system like the rest of us motherfuckers, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why they just say, oh, I'll fuck them. But if you start shitting on the sidewalk in, in San Francisco and pissing, and it starts to sink because they're not cleaning it up, then it becomes a fucking huge problem. That's right. a gross problem. That's a hygiene problem. That's a sanitation issue. Oh, it's nasty, okay? yeah. it, It's gross. I mean, San Francisco, if you're bitching about shit on the sidewalk, that means you're not doing your job cleaning it up. Yeah. All right? It's a public place. Right. You know? But the, 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 and horses walk down the street and shit on the goddamn si street. You clean that up. You know, clean up your shit. Yeah. Clean up the shit. Don't Ab just sit there, oh, homeless people are wrecking the city. What? Where's your sanitation? Yeah. Well, we're California, we're broke. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. People are still working jobs out there. Hollywood exists in California. There's a fucking lot of goddamn money out in the fucking state. Yeah. They can say, oh, the state's broke. Yeah, the state might be broke, but there's a lot of rich motherfucking bastards living out there. Right. Well, here's the thing, like, you know, there there's there are yeah. tons and tons of vacant and abandoned buildings out there. Right. So why don't they just fucking put apartments in there or something? Or just let the people, you know, you know Pete, let you know if they, they can fix those up let to livable condition. Yeah, let them yeah. squat in there. Yeah. You know, and, you know, give them give them utilities and and, and right. uh, give them some electricity. I mean, water. Christ, it's better than shit on the sidewalk. Right. Give, give them, them some a... plumbing. Give them some running water and some fucking flush toilet yeah. and shit. Then you won't have fucking shit on the sidewalk. That, that'd be now, a much better home, deal. That'd be a much better yeah, deal. Yeah. If people don't have nowhere to go, and McDonald's won't let them go there. Then what are they supposed to do? They have no choice. They have to take a shit. You have to just, you know, go. <laughs> 
people are gonna shit no matter where they're at. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I mean, they just go about it the wrong way. They go about this issue the wrong fucking way. Right. They just they they look at these homeless people seriously. You look they look down on homeless people. Right. And I know the main reason is they're not like they're not in the system and working. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's like, dudes, you know, there's various many reasons why people become homeless. I mean, I'm paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I easily could could lose everything. You know. Right. Well, you know, you own your house, so that's. Uh... I I own my home. That's the only like thing I got going right. I mean, as far as money, you know what I mean. As far as not being homeless. <laughs> Snap but crap. But still, <laughs> if I don't pay my heat bill. Let's say I wasn't working and I didn't pay my heat bill. Where right now I live in Wisconsin, so they can't shut you off from November fifteenth till March. I think it's April fifteenth. They yeah. can't shut you off. But as soon as April sixteenth hits, and they give you a call like two weeks, like uh-huh. you're way behind on your bill from the winter, they'll give you a call like two weeks ahead of April fifteenth, and be like, "Well, you know, as soon as uh this this is lifted, we you know we can." We can shut you off, yeah. which they can, you know. So a lot of people, and I've done this before. I just, I like one year I was really struggling as a single parent. Blah blah blah. Didn't pay the bill all winter. A thousand dollars of my tax return went to Excel Energy. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, a thousand fucking dollars. You know. <laughs> Vin, 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 Vinny, Vinny, you posted this uh, article. There's a Snap Crap. It's a new app uh, to, that the developer hopes to clean up the streets of, streets of San Francisco. Oh, to clean up. So, okay. so look, uh, apparently what this is, you you walk around and you see a picture, uh, or I mean, you see Pile some shit, shit somewhere. You see shit, shit on the sidewalk. You, you take a picture of it, and oh, and, and and it it, it, it it's sent to the the people that are supposed to come clean that shit up. Now you're walking around, you see that shit. Maybe maybe they should give them like a, a shovel. You give everybody a shovel that they're walking around. You see shit, just scoop, <laughs> scoop it up. I mean, if you're, but you have it's, to, bro, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's biohazard, Grim. You know, I know, I know. It's not like, I mean, it is like, it's shit, but it's human well, shit. Well, you're walking around, you, and you're going to take the time to take a picture of it, then have your little shovel and scoop it up. Exactly. Get it out of there. Exactly. What? You know, just, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> Where are they supposed to put it? Back in the street? I mean, aren't are you there, to aren't put they, it in a bag? Like oh. a dog, like you're walking your dog, you're supposed to fucking carry a bag around and carry up other <laughs> human shit? No, fuck I that. I don't, is it, aren't no, there I'm like, not doing that. I have a hard enough time p- picking up my dog shit. Aren't, 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 there, aren't there like uh, garbage cans? Or yeah. Whatever? But just a regular garbage can, you get a bunch of... Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. That could <laughs> what? work, I guess. Uh, you know, no whatever. one's going to do that, Grim. No one's going to fucking do that. I don't they're know. They're not going to pick it up. You They'll take a picture of it, but they're not going to fucking pick it take up. Take a oh, picture of it. That's gross. Here's somebody's it gross. shit. <laughs> it's not an answer. It's a bad app. Oh, God. Ew, I hate that app. It's gross. <laughs> it's like... People need to fucking... I don't know, but the, the homeless issue is a huge problem. I mean, anyway. obviously there's all a bunch of huge problems, but this is, I mean, these people need help. Like, they're, yeah. they're, they're fucked up, dude. They're, 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 they're fucked up. <laughs> Thanks for that, Vinny, by the way. What? That, that was the link. Crap app. Yeah, it's a crap app, all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh man, I tell you. <laughs> wow. Seriously, but so I guess uh, my a di- point a dick pothole. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like Oh god. Yeah, we have pothole app in fucking Eau Claire. No, that that picture that, that Z T posted it's a picture of a big pothole that looks like a dick. Oh yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh God. Yeah. Oh my all God. right. All right. Let's let's play some more music here. All right. Let's and do that. Uh, we'll, look up some stories well, and shit. Yeah, well, I got tons. Not. But, I don't. know. I have to look up some stories and stuff. And shit. Oh well, you might want no, to do I both. Don't have huh? to do <laughs> <laughs> I just smoke some weed. That's what yeah, I'm gonna do from the break. Uh, I'm gonna smoke weed. This is uh, <laughs> BMFS or Billy Motherfucking Strings. 
Or that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. We'll be back. All right. I'm addicted. I can't help it. <laughs> she is. She is. The word too, you know, and whatever. Well, there's something you don't see every day. <laughs> Closer by Nine Inch Tails uh, with a Muppets video there. They, they did a pretty good job putting that together. So, uh, yeah, I dig that song. I've always dug that song closer. It's, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, before that, we had Albert Castiglia doing Search in the Desert for the Blues over there at Don O'Dell's Legends about five, six years ago. Uh, great, great stuff, man. I like, I like Albert. He's, he's cool. And we kicked it off with Billy Strings as a younger man back in 2013, uh, doing Man of Constant Sorrow at the Horizon Bookstore. So, uh, all kinds of fun stuff right there. Yes, indeed. Let me tell you. <laughs> what you think, Miss Moose? Are you there? Are you there? I know you're there. You're just, like, on mute or something. You're not, uh... Paying attention, you're not listening to me. I'm being ignored by the moose. <laughs> moose girl, moose girl. Hello, I'm here. I had to pee really quick. Oh, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had enough time. Uh, I know you don't like that one. I like, uh, don't yeah. respond. It is it's what funny. it is. It is what it is. Yep. So. Anyway, I found this story today from the Free Thought Project. Oh, okay. And it the, the headline of it is, and this is from January 9, 2020, Atlanta police make monumental move. They disband entire drug unit to focus on actual crime. Yeah. Which, you know, it's about freaking time. It is about freaking time. I mean... Even the cops fucking know that weed is 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 the least of their problems, right? Right. I mean, there's so much sex trafficking. There's fucking meth use. There's just fucking theft, burglary, rape, sexual assault. I mean, those are real crimes. Yeah. Okay. Busting someone for weed is really a joke at this point in time. It's a bad joke. This is 2020. You know, come on, people. How many states have legalized recreational mar recreational marijuana now? I don't like know. Twelve or eleven or something, right? Well, there's about to be one more. Even more, yeah. Which one? This one. New Mexico. Yeah. Really? Well, they haven't started the uh, they haven't started the session yet, but uh, yeah. Oh, hang on, I yeah. gotta switch the head headset. Hang on. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen this year. That's cool, dude. I'm happy for you. Well, we'll see. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, we've talked about the difference. We've talked about, you know, the fact that legalizing it really isn't the term we'd, we'd prefer. No, not at all. Uh, the, the, only no. Thing, the only thing I care is, is uh, you know, growing some without having my door kicked in. The biggest thing I am <laughs> happy about the legal the quote unquote legalization of it is that what you just said, Grim. Like they're not going to be out there busting people for weed like hardcore. Like back in the day, they were like, "Oh my god, they smell weed." They're like, "Oh my god, you're smoking weed." Ah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They were yeah. just hardcore, like fucking what did you call it? Harassment. You know, it's yeah. like, oh my fucking god, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're realizing that they're you know all these states are rec legalizing recreational weed. You know, I mean, the cops know it's a waste of their goddamn time. The cops know it's just to get money, you know, to get sure. money out of people. I mean, they know that about pretty much everything, you know. Right. Like, oh, I'm supposed to pull someone over for expired tabs. They probably, you know, are struggling to fucking put food on this goddamn table, but I have to pull them over because of a goddamn sticker. A sticker that they don't have that says 20 on it. And we're talking a little tiny fucking goddamn sticker that costs $130 now because our governor, 
decided, or our our city council decided to enact the wheel tax. Thirty bucks is tacked onto it. Right. So it's a hundred and thirty dollars to buy a little two inch by fucking three inch sticker to put on my license plate. Which yeah. is ridiculous. It's just like my fucking eardrop story from last week. Okay, so Zach didn't hear the eardrop story, right? Yeah. So last night I told him the eardrop story. I said, I told him the whole spiel. We went to the ER, blah, blah, blah. Got the prescriptions. We were at Walgreens. The amoxicillin was $12. And I, I pulled out the bottle of eardrops that I had at home here. Mm-hmm. It's tiny, Grim. It's fucking four inches tall, right? Right. And I go, Zach, do you know how much they wanted for this little fucking tiny bottle of antibiotic eardrops? He's like, no. I'm like, $179. He's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if that doesn't tell you that something's fucked up with our fucking medical fucking shit and health insurance and all this crap, that I don't, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, seriously, we were at the fucking, we were at Walgreens, Matt and I, right? Uh-huh. And I said, how much is that? Or he was telling us, you know, the amount of selling is twelve dollars. I'm like, okay, how much of the eardrops? He's like, a hundred and seventy nine dollars. I looked at Matt. I'm like, we're not getting that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously, it's five. It's point five milliliters, people. Yeah. It's a four. It's a. It's a barely a four inch bottle. And the, 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 the part that contains the medicine mm-hmm. is like two inches. Right. I'm not kidding you. This shit's tiny. And yeah. if you don't have insurance, they want $179 for it. I'm like, I was shocked. Like, I'm seriously still in awe. Like, this is the hugest problem with our health insurance, health care, or whatever they call death care. It's, it's not even health care. It's fucking something beyond. It's it's not even, they shouldn't even call it health care. Because what people are getting here is not good. No, right? no. It's not good. And let's say you're in a fucking car accident, right? Yeah. Like you and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago on Freakers. You're in a car accident and you're, the the EMS or whatever, the ambulance, whoever comes to save your ass, puts you in a, either an ambulance or a helicopter. All right? Right. If they put you in that goddamn helicopter, do you know how much that helicopter ride is? Thousands. Uh, we're talking like 40 grand. That's a lot of thousands. 40, at least 40 grand. Yeah. To fifty grand. Wow. For a helicopter ride. Crazy. This is insane, and you have no choice in the matter because you're fucking passed out, dude. Right, right. You're unconscious. Yep. You can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a forty grand bill on my head. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, come on, it's insane. Sure. It's cra- it's it, it, you know it's crazy. I'm just saying. I mean, well, that's well, why. Let, that's why if you don't want that helicopter ride, and let's say you're like critical, like you might not make it, like you're that bad, right? Uh huh. If you, they're still gonna put you on that plane, that helicopter, or that ambulance. If you still have a, if you still have a pulse, dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. And an ambulance ride ain't cheap either. That's like ten grand. Yeah. And I am not making this up. This is not made up. I'm not, not just talking out of my ass. Seriously, an ambulance ride is like ten grand. Crazy. So if you don't want, if you're like on the borderline, like if you're super critical when they get to the scene of the accident, uh huh. If you have DNR on you. Then they they won't put, then hopefully they won't put you on that gut goddamn ambulance and if they did, then they would be in trouble. Like the, you can hire the family can hire an attorney after you die, right? Uh huh. They're like, well, why did you put him on? It's got DNR right on his fucking chest there, you know. Night, Vinny. 
Good night, Vinny. Yes, it is sick care, Vin. It's not health care. They shouldn't call it that. No. It's, it's not even. And it's fucking drain your assets care. Like, oh, yeah, we can save your goddamn life, but it's going to cost you $400,000. See, people don't have $400,000, all right? Mm-hmm. So then you're a slave. You're in debt then. Yeah. Well, I have, I have, a, I have a little helpful hint here for you on how okay. to save money on your medicine. Okay. This article is posted on internationalhighlife.com back in 2017. Can you recycle cannabis with a balloon? <laughs> well, see that uh, you posted that earlier in the week, and yeah. to me, it works, but it's not the ideal way. To well, make. no, I, 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 you smoke gets a little stale, but it's not. Yeah, it gets stale. Well, uh, you know, it's a good way to like get your dog high. Well, no, it's a good way to get you high too. Uh, as, as it says here, using the balloon method, uh, the alternate way to recycle cannabis that contains smoke. Uh, the smoke much better than the traditional shotgun method with the use of a balloon True. by blowing but your head. The person has a cold or is sick or something. Well, just and for it's yourself. Just not just, the ideal way. Like, just, if you're really just, hard up, maybe. <laughs> just, just do it for yourself. Uh, it's, right. So, so you blow your hits into the balloon repeatedly, and you can squeeze every last bit of smoke and vapor out of each hit. Uh, so you need a bomb. It only lasts, like, what, a minute? Whatever. It dissipates after. It, it doesn't stay in there. No, it stays in the balloon until it. it yeah, the smoke's still there. Uh, so you, you 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 need a bong bubbler pipe or one hitter. But not for a long time. Some weed lighter matches a balloon. So here's the steps. What? Here here's okay. the steps to do. Pack all your right, all right. pack your bowl with enough weed for one good hit. Uh, light it up and inhale all the smoke until it burns out. Hold the hit in while putting the balloon to your mouth. Exhale into the balloon. Uh, taking care to avoid over-inflating it. Hold the end tightly and take several deep breaths to prepare for the hit. Inhale the smoke from the balloon, holding it in temporarily. We all know this. We all Ex know this part. <laughs> exhale, exhale back into the balloon and, and and inhale. And then you can do that every, you know, and, and keep doing that until... They like hold the balloon, don't let the smoke out, whatever. Yeah, hold the balloon and keep doing that and you know, exhale into it again. And until until there's no more smoke coming out. But I guarantee if you do if if you put that smoke in that balloon, uh -huh. twenty four hours later it's gonna be gone. Well, no, it's, it's not, not it's not for twenty four hours later. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's, I'm saying. It's for right it's for right now, you know, when, when you want to Okay, so you, someone could just talk you're sitting on there that getting and high. You you don't you don't do just one hit, you do you do several hits. Right, right. So, um so 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 you, so you take your hit, you exhale into the balloon, take the next hit off the balloon, exhale back into the balloon to see if there's still smoke in there. If there is, then you breathe it back in, and then you do that again and again until there's no more smoke in the balloon, and 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 then it's just air, and then you can load up a fresh hit if you need one more. But uh, why why oh, okay. why I why get it? no I get it. It's it, you know it's why a why blow it out? Kid. You know why blow college it out? College kids could really use this tip. Well, every anybody could use it. Why blow well, it out yeah, into I the know, room? But especially why, <laughs> why, why waste it? Broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know everybody's broke. Uh, <laughs> everybody is broke. You're right. Yes. So uh, anyway, it's just it's just a way you know uh, uh, you know you might you might as well you might as well. Um, you might as well make the most out of your your, your weed, you right? You might as well. If you can recycle some of it, yeah, you know. But I just, like, some people, like, I don't recycle resin. Like, sometimes I do if I have really good resin. Yeah. But I generally don't like to recycle resin because to, to, if, you, if you're at the point where you have to smoke resin, that means you really have, you need to find a new dealer. Like seriously, <laughs> 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 seriously. If you if you're at the point where you can not store good weed. Need to find a new dealer. If you're at the point where you're having to smoke resin, now, say, like, are, are you are you are you trying to tell me you never smoked resin before? No, I have smoked resin okay. before. I have saved okay. resin before when I was really fucking broke and hard up. Uh huh. Oh yeah, and That's resin has helped me to get hot because it's so concentrated. Yeah. It fucking it, it's the good shit, dude. It's it's all concentrated. It's yeah. really good. Like, but it's so it's like tar. Sure, you know? sure, so sure. So it's very, very messy to deal with. Oh yeah, not, you know nothing, nothing. That's what I'm saying. If you're at the point where that's what you're resorting to, 
because you can't find really actual weed, like it's time to get a new deal. <laughs> yeah, n- n- nothing, nothing like the uh, the grunge out of a out of a bong stem. Right, right. Man, that's, <laughs> that's some serious stuff. You get stuff so there. ripped too. You get so ripped smoking resin, dude. This right. concept, I mean, it's so it's a good thing, you know. It's a good way to get high, but at the same time, it's like, ooh, I have to deal with all that black tar. And then you get it on your fucking hands and shit. So what I have to do is take the scrubby that I use for my dishes <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to get that fucking shit off my hands, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You, you need so, some you know, shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. So what, tell oh, me what yeah. tell, tell me what you think about this. Speaking of weed. Yeah. On, on motherboard. dot com here, vice. dot com, uh, motherboard by vice, whatever. Um, scientists discover two new cannabinoids: THCP and CBDP. Demon- wow. Demonstrate how much more we have to learn from studying marijuana. Oh, you think? It says the plant cannabis sativa produces more than four hundred chemicals, but only one THC gets you high. Or, so it seems, a group of Italian researchers announced on December 30th the discovery of two new cannabinoids, uh, chemicals produced by the weed like THC and CBD. The first, tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabiforol, THCP, is allegedly 30 times more potent than THC. Uh, Okay. Yeah, and they they claim, (laughs) they claim. Uh, whether that means it gets you 30 times as high or if it's even psychoactive at all is still unknown. But in mice, these what? mice, these mice get the high, man, I'm telling you. Uh, it appears that THCP was more active than THC at lower doses. And scientists also found, uh, cannabita for all CBDP, a cousin to CBD, the, uh, popular wellness additive. Uh, the discovery of THCP published in scientific reports could explain uh, some of the variability in getting high, why smoking mm-hmm. different blends right, right. Can, can give you notably different feelings. Exactly. It, it could right. also explain some of the medicinal aspects of THC, which right. is used to uh, treat nausea and appetite yeah. loss in cancer and HIV patients. Uh, yeah. Cannabis flowers are like little factories. That produce hundreds of chemicals, wow. around 60 of which are cannabinoids. Uh, yep. These these drugs mimic chemical chemicals the body naturally produces, and right. to balance well, the, the body has receptors. The brain has receptors for cannabinoids. But but your body naturally produces these anyway, uh, and, and and this just is gives you a little extra more Ooh. boost boost thing right, going on there. Right, right, right. Uh, there's another one, uh, tetrahydro, tetrahydrocannab. That's not a new word. Tetrahydrocannabivarin. That's T- what THC is, right? THCV. Oh, V, different. Okay. <laughs> For example, uh, it, it may be able to regulate obesity because it's, it's all THC, dude. Just it, you know, the, everyone reacts to it differently. Yeah, Some yeah, people but 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 can't this, do it. But but this one specifically regulates obesity, or may be able to wow. regulate obesity, because it can wow. moderate glucose levels. Wow. Ha- however, okay. TH- THCV concentrations in most cannabis strains are very small, so sm- smoking a joint every day, or every couple hours, whatever, probably won't prevent you from getting diabetes. So No, you can't rely on <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But you know, it, Sorry, but no. it's worth it's worth it to try. <laughs> right, I give it a shot for sure, and then you'll feel fucking better. You yeah. Know. So, anyways, there, there's that. There, uh, uh, check it out. Thanks to uh, Motherboard, there, Vice, uh, for that. It's so ridiculous. Like, okay. So, oh, I'm sorry, Graham. Go ahead. That's all right. No, I'm done with that. No. Okay. So, the federal government decides to make the smoking. Age to 21, right? The age yeah. to be able to buy cigarettes. Right, right. Okay, so if they can do that, like in one month or th- two weeks, they seriously got that passed like so fast, dude. Like I told Zach, he's like, oh no, it'll take a while before it goes in effect. I'm like, no, dude, it went in effect last week. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, what? I go, go <laughs> to the store, go to Quick Trip. There'll be a big sign on the door saying, as of blah, blah, blah. 
the age of cigarettes is 21, per right. federal government. Yep. All right? Yep. He's like, really? You were right, Mom. I'm like, I, do you think I was lying? Anyway, um, he's like, that wouldn't have in effect fast. I'm like, yeah, the federal government says that they can just do it like that. Yeah, you know? man. Take hey, kid, read some. So read. Why can't they just do the same thing with fucking weed? <laughs> exactly. Like twelve states or whatever the fuck it is. It's like, come on. You know, you could do them for cigarettes. You can change the smoking age or the age to buy them. Sure. The legal yeah. age, but you can't do it with weed. Right. It's a federal fucking government. Absolutely. You know, fucking do it. Do it. Just fucking do it. <laughs> Yeah, the old cannabinoids are really good, too, Flash. No, because they don't want to piss off the governors and shit. They don't want to fucking tell all their states what to do. It's like, fuck you, you guys do it all the time. You say, if you don't do this, we're going to cut off your fucking federal funding for your roads and shit. Right. It's like, fuck you. You know what I mean? It's such a fucking... Yeah, it's it's, it's blackmail. It's such a mafia deal, dude. What? It's blackmail. It is. It's fucking blackmail. Yeah. What the fuck? You know, come on, people. You guys gotta fucking see this for what it is. I mean, I don't know what to fucking say, but everyone gets so wrapped up in the shit that it, it, it's been the same way. You're not gonna change it. Right. You know, you're not gonna change it. It's and, not gonna and, fucking and, change. And, Quit having hope and, in this system. And, and, Seriously. <laughs> Obama won an election based on one word, or supposedly won an election. One word. Hope. Yeah. That's how he got all these fucking motherfuckers and fucking support him. Exactly. Give me a fucking break. And there is no <laughs> fucking hope for this establishment that we have going on right now, this government. You betcha. Look what happened two week look what happened this week. All kinds of stuff, and we'll get to some of that look later. What fucking's going on this week, bitches? We'll we'll get to some of that later. But right now we're gonna yeah, do some okay. more music here. Yeah, let's do that. And, w- and when we come back, I'm going to share with you a message to all Americans from the medical cartel. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. That yeah. Be good. <laughs> all right. All and right. so thank you, everyone, for tuning in once again to the Freakers Ball. Okay, here, here's a song by my girlfriend. Samantha? Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, baby. (laughs) Yeah, baby. Man, I tell you, that that dude's uh, guitar playing always amazes me. As Joe Bonham also there uh, uh, was slow train at the Beacon Theater out there in New York City. Uh, Wow, I just... uh, Amazement, amazement. Before that, for the Moose Girl, we had Mandolin Orange doing a track called Golden Embers. And we kicked it off there with Samantha Fish at Shank Hall on December 4th, 2019 there, uh, doing a track called Watch It Die. Yeah, man. So, uh, uh, I, uh, Flash, somebody's asking me, it's something I mentioned, uh, last week, I believe, uh, about changing the time on Freaker's Ball. Uh, yeah, we decided to keep it where it was. I say we. Moose Girl decided to keep it where it was. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're, we're, we're gonna, uh, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it there. Uh, at the, at the same, same bat time, same bat channel. At least for now, you know. Um, it's possible it'll change in the future, but, uh, yeah, we've been at this time for so long, so. Uh, pro- probably, uh, it'll probably just keep it here, uh, at this particular time, so, um, you know, that's cool, that's all right, uh, we, we can deal, um, <laughs> uh, apparently, apparently an hour earlier, uh, just does not work for the most, which is fine, fine by me, um, I, I was just, uh, you know, um, well, whatever. It works, it works, it works out, it'll work out. It'll be all good, all good! <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so we got this message here for you. A message to you, well, all you Americans, but it, I imagine it also applies in other countries. But uh, um, 
it definitely applies to all Americanos. Uh, yeah, I say it applies to other countries, but maybe, maybe not as much. Uh, this is article is posted up on naturalblaze.com on January 7th, so just a few days ago. Uh, here it is by John Rappaport. The United States medical system kills 2.25 million Americans per decade. Yes, per decade. Hear ye, hear ye, and y'all, and you, and thou, and everybody, we're the medical cartel. We rule your lives, but we, re but we really care about you. We, 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 we do, we really do. We like you. I'm back. So here's the deal. During the course of your lives, we'll diagnose you with 50, 60, 70, ah, we're shooting for 100, disorders and diseases, most of which will be fake. But you'll, yep. get, you'll get drugs. Everybody wants drugs, right? Who cares what they yeah, are? Fuck, yeah, just trust the doctor because they're wearing a white jacket, <laughs> fucking dumbass. Who, who, Jesus Christ. You who, trust who, this motherfucker with your life? Who, who cares what they are? Fuck. Leave that to us. These yeah, drugs these, that. these drugs will create new symptoms. And when oh you, my god. And right. when, yes they will. And when you come back to yeah. us, we'll call those Because you have severe diarrhea because you took what we told you to take. <laughs> when you come back to us it's like you know what? I'm not taking your shit no more. <laughs> Alright. When you come back to us, we'll call those symptoms new diseases and disorders. Uh give them highfalutin labels and pass along more drugs as treatments and so forth, and so on. Forget nutritional deficiencies, no such thing. Forget toxic environmental chemicals, never happen, they don't exist. From cradle to grave, you'll march in a long gray line to our door, declining in health from year to year, and with the 60, 70, or 100 vaccine shots thrown in there as well, your immune systems will deteriorate. You'll eventually wind up in warehouses, uh, nursing homes, and more or less hibernate your way into the grave. But you'll live longer. That's a real plus. The whole program is meant to keep you from being able to think or protest or opt out or rebel against the status quo, which is beautiful when you think about it, because the status quo is what maintains the peace. Soft lights, soft music, silence, wonderful. Easy, does it? You see... In significant ways, the womb and the grave are similar. It's that middle part, everything in between, that can create bother, quirk, and weirdness. We smooth out those years. We answer all of your questions, particularly, what is wrong with me? People always ask that one, and we provide answers. Diseases and disorders. We give them names. We fill in the blanks. No more need to wonder. Just let us do our jobs. Those of you who don't or won't, we exile to the outer darkness. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on normal. Normal is you coming to us for updates on your condition. We're the pros. We're highly trained. We feel your pain. We love you as long as you're sick. We collaborate with your meddling family members to make sure you know you're sick. Then, everything is okay. You can wear each disease and disorder label proudly as a badge of honor. You can talk to friends and neighbors and compare badges. Face it, what else is there to talk about? The weather? We facilitate conversations throughout society. How's your bipolar? Not bad. How's your son's social anxiety disorder? What drugs is he taking? And so on. Rich subjects to chat about. You can pretend you're educated in medical science. Be the first on your block to understand how viruses attach themselves to host cells in the body or hold forth on gene expressions. You'll be a winner and in the one up and shin, win, win the one up and shin sweepstakes. Uh, during the fake pandemic, you can help spread worry, concern, and fear. We need citizen experts. 
Have you noticed how many people are talking about the artificial limbs and even organs these days? It's the coming thing. You won't need to qualify for replacements. Just volunteer. And what about the brain? It's filled with processing errors and prejudiced data. We can do better, and we will. In 30 years or so, we'll hook you up to a supercomputer and wash away all of your anxiety in a flood of superior understanding. Disclaimer, all replicant organs and synthetic thoughts are subject to rejection and unforeseen internal complication. Ask your doctor if everything we do and say is right for you. If he expresses doubts, immediately report him to the, part, to the Department of Homeland Security. There's nothing worse than a dissident doctor. We'll train the, uh, them to within an inch of their lives, but sometimes they sprout mental disorders. Remember, with us, you'll never walk alone. We, we know where your grave is, and we'll lead you there with the kind of firm hand. Life is worrisome, but death is forever. A comforting thought in these troubled times. <laughs> yeah, that's John Rappaport there. Uh, I'll post it on Natural Blaze. The message to all Americans from the medical cartel. So just trust them. Just believe them. Don't, don't <laughs> just, just <laughs> yes, Eli Lilly is definitely in on it, Sock. Oh, boy. These fucking bastards. Uh, They're uh, all but, in on it. It's but all I, 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 I love that piece, you know. <laughs> it's, it's done. It's, 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 it's so well written. And uh, so big, big props there. Big props to uh, Mr. Rappaport. That was uh, a good. Yeah. <laughs> he shreds them, man. He shreds them good. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so, it's all true. It's it all is. true. You know, all you got to do is believe him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> believe the lies, and and they will they will fucked. they will take believe care of you. Believe the lie, you're fucked. They'll take care of you, cradle to grave, man. They'll, yeah, they'll fuck feed, take care. They don't mean take care. They'll feed you the full. Way that you of, think they mean it? Feed you full of drugs and all kinds of that like, wonderful shit, fuck, man. You're a guinea pig. Oh yeah, it's lovely. Hey, let's shoot you up with this shit. It's freaking lovely. <laughs> Come on uh, now, we'll give you like. So I went to some store. I don't know what the fuck store. Don't matter what store. Maybe it was Walmart. I don't fucking know. They said they give me... There was like on the cart or in the store, like there's a sign that says, get a fucking $5 or I think... I don't know what it was. CVS maybe. Yeah. $5 gift card if you get a flu shot. It's like really now they're paying people to get flu shots. Exactly. <laughs> They're giving you money to get a flu. That's how desperate they are for you to get this shit every fucking year, dude. Yeah. They want, and then, but okay, so they'll promote giving, getting the flu shot every year, right? Right. But then, like, if you pay attention, like the CDC or whatever will come out and say, "Oh well, it only prevents certain strains of flu," and blah blah blah. It's just like your shit's bullshit, dude. Right. It's all about. It's a big fucking scam. Well, it only treats certain kinds of influenza, not all kinds of influenza. So why are we even getting the shot in the first place? <laughs> Whatever you have, not that kind. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we're just shooting you up with this type of shit. We don't even, it, it's not preventing what you think is preventing. You guys are basically falling for our fucking bullshit in our lives. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. We're trying to pump up this shit so to see how many people will actually fall for it. Just like the fucking goddamn Jews said... You're going to go take a shower now. Yeah. No, the, You're going to uh, go the, take a shower now. The, the Germans. They walk the, you into the, a the, gas the, chamber with no... I mean, it's obviously... It's not a shower. Okay? The, the Germans are the ones that said that, not so, the Jews. The, oh, yeah. The Germans said that. The Jews were the ones being brought into the fucking quote-unquote showers. They get in there. It's obviously not a shower. The second those people stepped into that chamber... Yeah. They knew they were dead. They knew it was done. They oh, knew, absolutely. They knew it wasn't a first shower. Right. They knew that. Yeah. And you know, it, and the way they killed them, it was a very painful slow death. It wasn't fast. Oh, sure, sure. Because it was like that mustard gas or whatever the fuck. And it's not a slow death. I mean, it's a slow death. It's not a fast death. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's, it's disgusting. Oh, it's, it's messed it's up. It's truly disgusting. Truly disgusting. Oh, yeah, you're going to go take a shower. Yeah. You know, I mean, lies. That's the tactic. If you guys don't see that main theme throughout history, then you're not paying attention. You haven't done enough research. And right. you're buying into the lie. Exactly. So I would, I would suggest stop doing that. I would. I know it can be difficult because you're like, you don't want to believe that you've been duped this whole time, right? Exactly. I get that. It, it's, it's, it's emotional. It can be emotional. It can be like, what the fuck? Right. But at the same time, the truth will always prevail no matter what. Even after eons of time. Yeah. The truth will come out. And I would rather be on the side of truth now than later, you know? Right. And that's why, like, I was determined to find out why everything is so fucked up. And that's what started me down the rabbit hole. And once you're down there far enough that you can't get, there's no exit, dude. Exactly. You're, you're stuck there. You, you, you're not even, it's not even being stuck. You're just like, you're there. You're there. You know? you're, you're there. Yep. <laughs> you know? You know? Yeah. And once you realize that, then it is kind of like an awakening. Like, for me, that's how it was for me. Sure. You know, and there's so many people that I've tried to talk to about these things that I thought I could talk to, and I realized I couldn't talk to them about it, so I don't talk to them about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's why it's it's, it's really a personal thing. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, but, but that's the beauty of Figures Ball, is that I've been able to use this kind of as my platform, per se, or whatever. Yeah. You know, and I think it's doing a lot. I think it's doing more than the average person because the average person is still stuck in that, for lack of a better, slave mode. Right. Right? The slave mentality where, oh, yeah, we're doing this. And then if the government decides to bomb, to, to kill a top Iranian general, mm -hmm. there's people that are like, well, there must have been a reason for it. Right. They just leave it at that. All and the they just all the bootleggers. Their lives, like they don't even like put two and two together. Or they don't even think of what this means, like the ramifications or anything. Sure. No, they, they don't trust government. Well, it's like it really. Well, they're you they're, don't think they're for yourself that. Oh, no, sorry, they're God. they're absolutely. They're told what to think. They're told what to believe. They're right. told They're told how to feel uh, about a certain thing. Uh, right. They, they, you know, it, it's that. that, it's, it's, that it's, it, it, it's the point that. The parents, like, I, I told my sons to, to do the selective service. I said, if you don't, you're going to be harassed. So just fucking do it. You know what I mean? Well, it, it's if like it's, a point in time where you're going to be drafted, we'll, we'll decide what we're going to do at that point. But for now, just do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it sucks. It sucks so bad to be in that position. I do feel like I'm living almost under the same tyranny as those Jews were back in 1942 and before. Sure. I seriously do. I feel this. I feel it's like a pressure. Yeah. Like, it's seriously like a pressure. Like, when I found out that this Iranian general was killed, like, it was like a pressure. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm hmm And I don't know how to explain it other than that. You know, it's a pressure. And it, it pisses you off and there's all kinds of emotions and you're just like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? You're just yeah. like, oh my god, this sucks. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a shock. To, it, that, it is PSTD. Oh, it's... Post it's no, PTSD. It's, Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. And we're, we've all, we actually, everybody in this country suffers from a bit of that. Well, everybody... Because what's going on is abuse. What is taking place, what is happening to all, all the people, not just in the U.S., the pe the average people in the world, it's abuse. Okay. Well, yeah, you, you know, you're fed cognitive dissonance. Yeah, you, you, it's abuse. You, you see one thing and and you know what you think about it, but then you're told right. but then you're something told a different thing. And 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 you have to somehow and you're make supposed sense to be like, you're, it, of yeah, these two like, different you're ideas. This. Right. Yeah, you got these two different ideas in your head, and you got to somehow make your brain work with that, live with that. 
and and it's it's it that drives people insane. It does. It it can. It it it's absolutely can. Yeah. And so it's abuse daily. It's so, daily abuse. Every time that they feel lie to you, mm-hmm. that's abuse. Right. Okay. People, a lot of people don't think about it that way. So so here. I ha- here, here I have this article. You, you talked, you, you, you mentioned the uh, the Iranian general that was uh, yes droned Murdered. out of droned out of existence, and, and how Murdered. people got that way. Yes. But then the next day, or the day after that, the right. uh, the the airliner that was right crashed, shot down. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Seventy six people or something. Something like that. Uh, so here, here, here's the article. This is posted on RT dot com, Russia Today. Uh, Secret Intelligence and Highly Likelies, How Media Created a Narrative Around Tehran Jet Crash to Blame Iran, Russia, and Trump. Uh, And this this is posted by a Serbian-American journalist named Nabosa Malik uh, over here. Um, And it says here, Whatever caused Flight 752 to crash just after takeoff from Tehran, the 176 people who died were quickly drafted as elements in a propaganda narrative targeting yeah. both Iran and Russia and also yep. President Trump. Uh, the yep. U- Ukraine uh, International Airlines, UIA, Boeing 737, took off from Khomeini International Airport in Tehran. Oh, it was Wednesday morning. Uh, it was it was bound for Kiev amid rising tensions over the Iranian missile strikes against the United States targets inside Iraq. The nine crew members and 167 passengers on board, including 15 children, I don't know why they need to put that in there, but uh, well, right, that sucks. Yeah, may have complained that the flight was running almost an hour late. Within seven minutes, they would all be dead. Right. Initial reports. Jesus Christ. An initial report spoke of technical problems as the cause. But Thursday morning, however, the narrative was shifting. U.S. officials were confident that Iran shot down the Ukrainian yeah, jetliner. Uh, CBS reported citing anonymous sources. The AP qualified the speculation as highly likely, as weasel phrase made the notorious uh, made notorious by the official UK narrative of the 2018 Salisbury Novacek poisonings. By the time wow. the New York Times got it, though, the qualifications have disappeared, and they stated an Iranian missile brought down the plane. No possible, no sub, pos, you know, subjective saying at all. It's all an Iranian missile brought down the jetliner. Uh, so it, it went from. Rumor, speculation to fact. Uh, within a, a lie. complete with, fucking lie. Yeah, it was within a couple generations of the story. Yeah. Uh, within a, within Christ. within hours. Um, Jesus then Christ. then it was Canadian PM Trudeau. Uh, he told reporters the intelligence from multiple sources indicates that the plane was shot down by an Iranian service to air missile. Uh, which, it's a lie, it's, it's, it's a huge lie. Um, it was textbooks, cytogenesis, cytogenesis, at work. The manufacturing of a narrative through circular reporting and reliance on published assertions as proof. So some guy reports this thing, another guy picks up on it and says, this is what I heard over here, and then the third guy picks up on it and takes it a little step further to brainwash everybody into believing the first lie which yep. was only a speculation, which has now become oh my fact. God. Wow, <laughs> so, that's how it happens, though. That is how it, works, it goes. Yeah, uh, the initial. I mean, assa- it's ridiculous. Like I've seen. Seriously, I okay. So we talked about Daily Mail earlier. Like I watch Daily Mail every day. Right. And I've seen stories on there get changed within an hour. The headline gets changed within an hour. Sure, sure. I mean, seriously, it's like, what? You guys just said this, now you're saying this. Like, when the Prince Andrew thing came out, they said it was Beatrice, his daughter's fault, that, like, leaked it. Then, like, a day later, they're like, no, it was Prince Andrew's assistant, not Beatrice. Right. It's like, that was a total cover-up, dude. That was a total, like, whoops! Oh, we got it! That pedal. Oh no, we didn't mean to say that. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was so obvious. 
I was like, did that just fucking happen? I'm like, yep, yeah, that's how it goes. Right. You know, and as soon as you know that, you're being lied to. Like, I seriously have disgust for liars. Like, personally, I, to me, that's the most, one of the most offensive things you can do to me. Yeah. Is lie to me. Because I feel that when you lie to somebody and they believe it, right. you just made an ass out of them. Sure, sure. You just made them into a fucking ass. Yeah. You know, for believing your fucking lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you shouldn't be able to do that to somebody. You know, that's a cruel thing to do to somebody. Mm hmm You know, don't fucking tell me some goddamn lie, dude. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have the truth straight up. Absolutely. You know I mean? Yeah, sure. But, you know, don't fucking lie to me. Because right. that is so offensive to me. Like, I can't even tell you. It's so offensive. Yeah. Like, you, you, you want to make me into an ass. That means you're a fucking asshole. You know, I mean, seriously, why would you want to make an ass out of somebody? It's cruel. Yeah. It's cruel. Now you you okay. may have you may have on this Russian plane, I mean this uh, Iranian plane thing or Ukrainian yeah. plane. Uh, right. Uh, you may have seen a video of a of a dot flying. I did see that video, like, and like then a, like little, Uber last night, he's like, "Well, where's the market lights?" I'm like, "Dude, it's like far away." Well, anyway, like you're yeah, not so you see, see those, you know. You, but, you, see, you see the video; it's like a dot flying through the air, yeah. And then then you see it brighten up like there's an explosion there. I believe it's a fake video. It, I don't it think is. It, it is. It's, it's, it's proven fake. Uh, the, the was, video, okay, good the, because it didn't look real. It, yeah. You know, the the video was geotagged, and it was nowhere near. Uh, Iran at that point, and <laughs> oh, okay, Geotags. total total bullshit, total bullshit. Um, yeah, I was watching it, and that's like so it got me going because I didn't know it was bullshit at first, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, but this yeah, is a but, perfect example of they show you something, you're supposed to believe that, right? You look at it, and you know, yeah. really. Uh, like they put it on the Daily Mail story, they showed that fucking video. They're oh, like, I'm sure this is what happened. I'm sure they uh, did. They didn't say this is what happened. They said this video was filmed. But now it's coming to find out what? It wasn't even anywhere near the goddamn. It's fake. Yeah. This is a perfect example. Perfect <laughs> example of how they lie to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what they do. Big time. Yes, they, that's their main MO. <laughs> if you guys don't believe that yet, I feel bad for you on a level because that means you're still stuck in that with them. Absolutely. Have you guys ever seen Hunger Games? Uh, no. Like, the hung oh my god, have you ever read the books, Grim? No. You can oh my god, dude, those are some good books and movies. Okay. This, we're like, this is like the Hunger Games, what we got going on here. It's totally, it, it totally is. Uh, I figure anything that popular has got to be brainwashing propaganda. It, but no, dude, it, it's, it's what, it shows, it, it, it is, it's, and Woody Harrelson's in them. Yeah. And he, he's a good actor, you know. All right, all right. I'll take your word for it. I'm just saying, watch the first one. See what you think. Just watch the first one. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Just see uh, what you think. All right, we're going to play a quick music set here. All right. And we'll Let's come back that. and cover a couple more stories. We will. See what's going on there with those. Hopefully the world don't blow up but before that. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll be back. <laughs> you know, you never know. You never know. What's going to happen? You just, in this day and age, you don't know. Yeah. An asteroid could hit or something. You, you know, you don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, if you're not watching the right. video on this video, then you're missing out. It's called Bob. <laughs> oh, Circle points out there in the chat that... Uh, uh, Zeppelin and bluegrass is like a cat and dog hybrid. It's just wrong. But that's Swedish bluegrass. Steven Seagull's doing uh, Black Dog there. Uh, it's funny. Before that, uh, four guests, uh, 29400, uh, a system of a down with sugar. Great track, great video there. And we kicked it off with Weird Al Yankovic doing Bob. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some funny stuff. Hello, I'm here. I'm uh, sorry. I uh, had a phone call. All right. Well, it happens, you know. But well, I'm um, back now. Sorry right. about that. Well, glad to have you back. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah. It was the kid's dad. He was trying to get a hold of Matt. It's like, oh, Matt didn't answer okay, his phone. Okay. Oh, whatever. One of them deals. Anyway. Right, uh, right, right. So, uh, oh. uh so, so, Circle, Circle was, was, <laughs> was having a hard time there with Steven Seagulls doing Led Zeppelin, you know. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Because, you know, girl, I hear you, man. I'm Led Zeppelin pure girl. Like, let's up, straight <laughs> up, pure. Like, none of these cover shit. Yeah. Although, some bands have blown me away doing Led Zeppelin covers, but not very many. Like, Fish yeah. can do Live and Love and really fucking good. Like, I'm saying, they blew me away at Up in Valley when yeah. they covered that song. But, I mean, um, no one can top Led Zeppelin. No one, you can try, so you can cover them, but you'll never be them. No. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, oh God, eleven. I know, Grim. <laughs> but is the garage door working or not? Yeah, okay. uh, almost, almost. Okay, okay. Almost. It, you know what? It's impressive though that you're doing all this on your own. <laughs> it, 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 it's so close. It's so close. But uh, right. I, I overheated the motor, so I, I couldn't finish doing it. Right. Um, and and so it'll have to wait until tomorrow, which, you know. Like, I had problems with my garage door before I got the new one, the opener. It was fucked up, dude. It was doing the same stuff you're saying. It was just fried. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it was it was old, so we had to get a new one. But it's impressive that you're fixing this one. It's impressive. Yeah, yeah. So, I, and, and, you know, I, I think I, I have learned... A lot about garage door operation. I can, right. I can do, you know that you know that book, um, uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Yes. Yeah. See, I could I could write a book now. The Zen right, and, and, and the Art of uh, garage, garage Door, door opener, opener Repair. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna say this. I'm not trying to burst your bubble or anything, but you could have seriously gone out and got a new garage door opener for like. Two fifty. <laughs> yeah, well, I've spent much, much less. I've spent much, much less than that. Okay, well, there you go. You're saving money. Yep. All right. So uh, seriously, I mean, it's cool that you have the ability to do it. Oh. Most people couldn't do what you're doing. They would not be able to fix it on their own. It's not that hard. It's, it's, I mean, no, it's, it's, to you, it's not that hard. <laughs> it, it's it's working up there at that elevation is the only thing that bothers me. Right, but to you, it's, you don't understand, Grim. Not everybody thinks like you. Like to you, it's not that hard. Like you have the kind of mind that can figure that shit out. Like my son Matt. Yeah. You know, some things I'm like, no fucking way, I can't do it. Well, I, I, mean, I, like, I have the I have the jeep parked in there in the garage, so I just climb back up on top of it. Right, yeah. Oh, well, that's perfect. Working yeah. on it from up top there. All right. Just anyway, don't dent your fucking hood. Don't no. Don't you just you don't want a dental hood on the jeep. Oh, it's, it's made of you real. Know. It's made of real steel. I would never try this. Oh, with yeah. a, okay. I, so I, I, I would. I would never try this with a Toyota or. Oh yeah, my Hyundai. You would not want to do. <laughs> no, that. No, that no, that would that, that hood no. would be smashed. Yeah, uh, it would be dented in. Yeah. You know, even if I stood on the kind of thing, it would be that. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely. Me too, like, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so a person goes into a diner. Yeah. And they order some food, whatever, and they're there asking the uh, waiter some questions. Okay. And apparently, one of those questions was really stupid. Ah, uh, okay. Which happens often. So, so this diner <laughs> in Colorado char charges the customer for asking a stupid question. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So, really? Yeah. He's trying to just be funny. So, yeah, you may have heard there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yes, well, I've heard that. But not, that can be. Not at Tom's Diner. In fact, it'll cost you. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the beloved diner in Denver has recently gained some attention online after a customer uploaded a photo of the receipt to Reddit. Uh, the first tab reads, uh, normally, one side, uh, mashed potatoes, right. two ninety nine, one chicken tenders, basket, $9. And the last item has people talking. And laughing. 
One stupid question, 38 cents. <laughs> So, perhaps surprisingly, wow. that Reddit users saw the photo, which was posted uh, recently in a subreddit called Me in the Real Life, uh, weren't really outraged at all, with uh, many largely supportive of the shaming tactic. He said, if I got paid to listen to people's stupid questions, I'd probably be a right. billionaire. <laughs> no shit, dude. And they charge you 38 cents. Shit. If I charged every uh, for every stupid question I was asked, I'd be I'd be freaking rich. Another you know, wrote. Um, <laughs> one guy says, "I love Tom's Diner," <laughs> but really, the thirty eight dollar upcharge should not have come as a surprise to the customer because the restaurant lists the price for stupid questions under the side section of the menu. <laughs> it's on the menu, and according to some, asking Tom's Diner. Uh, what, what constitutes a stupid question is a finable offense in and of itself. So the person who shared the photo did not disclose what the stupid question was, which led to the charge. <laughs> I'm not uh, God. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it too. All right. Like the loose tea. Okay, I see you talking about Windows 7 in the chat there. Let's wrap it up with yeah, the Windows. Yeah, we're let's let's see, wrap it up with the with the, I wish I it up. Well, Let's wrap it up with the Windows 7 story. Let me find it All here. All right, let's do it. Um, where 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 is it here? I know I got because it. Because I don't have it anymore. Like if if I did, I would already be on my. If I had a Windows 7 machine, it would have been on Linux a long time ago. But my Windows 17 or 7 x 17, my Windows 7. Has Linux on it. Oh, I think if I, if, if I did fire it up, it would work on Linux. I, I think it's, I think it's this one here. Okay, it's not okay. it's not titled with Windows Seven, but All here right. it is. Okay. Uh, posted on uh, the ninth, which is yesterday. Um, Windows Seven end of life. A quick reminder note today for everyone: Windows Seven operating system is at the end of life on January fourth. Which is next Tuesday. Yes, that's Patch Tuesday. You get one more update on the books before it stops. There will be no more free updates to Win7 Win OS for users. While using, installing, and activating Windows 7 is still possible after January 14th, it's recommended that all instances be upgraded to Windows 10. Blah, 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 bullshit. If you need to extend your support, then Microsoft does have a program uh, for extended uh, support after that. Of course, it's not free. Uh, they will charge you for that. Um, so uh, uh, bear in mind uh, that uh, as of uh, next Tuesday, that uh, that will be the final end of life um, thing for Windows 7. So, uh, just, you know, um, if, if you need to, if you, if you, if you want to keep using Windows, just know that you need to keep all of your, uh, virus and, and anti-malware shit updated. Uh, right. And but I would, I would suggest Linux. I seriously Absolutely. Would Linux would be the way to go. You'd be so much safer and so much better. I mean, you, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but seriously, if you're used to Windows, whatever Linux pro or platform you choose, yeah, you can pick one that's close or similar to what you're already used to. It's just a little bit of different wording or whatever. It's just a little bit of a learning curve, but you, you see, there's no fear. You should have no fear about oh, yeah. trepidation. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You can I, use yeah. Windows 8. Yeah, sure. Um, it's also an option, but in Windows 10, obviously. But um, on any machine that you have, you should probably – it's probably a good idea, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, but it's probably a good idea to partition and just install Linux on your machine. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. right. I, I, mean, I want. I we want. We need to do that with this machine, Graham. We need to do that with this machine. I sure. want. I want Windows Nine. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got. We got. We got to do the last set here. All right. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> this Thank just, you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, this just came out yesterday. It's a band called Evanescence. I've heard of Evanescence before. All right. You'll dig this.
They didn't just come out on Tuesday. No, no, no. The song, this track. The song. Okay, the song. Okay. Well, it, it actually came. <laughs> anyway, the video just came out. You'll dig it. Um, you'll, oh, you'll, oh, cool. You'll, you'll, you'll yeah, they're it. a great band. Oh, yeah. That right. girl's insane. Here we go. Is this on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Australia's finest there, the Mason Rack Band at Cover and Black Betty. Man, uh, those guys are great. I wish I could get more music from them, but they just, it's just not much out there. Uh, before that, Credence Clearwater Revival doing Fortunate Son in uh, some uh, Vietnam scenes going on. That is a request by both Hansel uh, and re-requested by the Moose Girl. And we kicked it off with Evan Essence covering Fleetwood Mac's The Chain. Apparently that's uh, for a video game, Gears 5. Um, but, okay. uh, yeah. So, uh, very nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. that's a good cover. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, you got the yes. uh, Dork Table tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. Dork rule. Dorks. Uh, Don't I, save the world. 2 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on Sunday at noon with the blues and the trivia. And we we got it. We have a, yeah, a new uh, a new uh, show page for the blues show now. I just made it this week. We so. do. It looks really cool. I like it. Yeah, it's you really know, cool. it, I don't really know the purpose of it. Uh, I, I don't really know that there's a need or a purpose for it. I haven't had one That's all this cool. time. No, but it looks good. Yeah, yeah. So it's there. Um, anyway, add so add something to it. Yeah, yeah, show page. And then Hal Anthony yeah. follows me at 3 p.m. Eastern behind uh, the woodshed, opening up a big old can of whoop ass. Uh, this will be his uh, 353rd episode of Behind the Woodshed wow. on, on Real Liberty Media. Uh, wow, so and, if he gets to win, he gets to 400. We well, need to do something. Well, when, when he gets to 364, I believe. That okay. will, that will be seven years. Wow. Okay. Well, let's do something. Let's do a money. All right. Or All right. Cool. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I don't want to. All right. Good. Good. I'm All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So cool. Yeah. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com dot com for all the rest of the shows on RLM Radio throughout yeah. the week. We'll be back. Well, I'll be back next week. Moose Girl will not. Uh, I will not be back. I will not. I'll, I'll be around, but not here at Freakers Ball. Yeah, but I'll be here. Hopefully, I'm not gonna have wood now. All right. Well, if if she's not here, it's balls to the wall. If she is, it's right. Freakers Ball. I won't be here. No, I will not be here next Friday. If so, I'm alive and well next Friday, I will be in Minnesota at a festival. So get your know. get your hard rocking requests in for balls to the wall. Yeah, man. <laughs> Rock right. on, people. Okay, everybody, have a great weekend. Yep. And uh, talk to you all later. Yep. Peace. Peace.